Good day, guys, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chico Square, the Maths and Science Guru. So, in this video, I'm going to be presenting the Haber process. Okay, the Haber process from Fritz Haber is a process that is used in the manufacturing of ammonia. Right, ammonia in chemistry is called NH3. Ammonia is a very important compound to humanity because it produces a variety of beneficial substances for us to survive on the planet. And among those substances, we have ammonium nitrate, which is written as NH4, NO3. This is a fertilizer that is used in supplying nitrogen to plants. Remember, nitrogen is one of the major elements required by a plant, and it is essential for chlorophyll production, uh, and uh, that's why it's important and necessary that we supply nitrogen to the plants, right? So, let's dive into how ammonia is produced. But before we do that, uh, there are also the other sides of the coin with regards to ammonia, right? Ammonia, I've talked about it being beneficial to humans. Also, it's very catastrophic to humans because it can be used to manufacture explosives. And one of the explosives that can be manufactured by ammonia is called uh, TNT, trinitrotoline. But in chemistry, it's called 246 trinitromethyl benzene. And it was used during the World War II. Anyway, let's get into the gist of the story. Ammonia is produced by two raw materials. We have nitrogen and hydrogen. Right, nitrogen is a diatomic molecule, N2. Hydrogen is a diatomic molecule, N2 as well. So when we combine nitrogen and hydrogen in the ratio 1 is to 3 respectively, we're going to get ammonia. So this is how the reaction is going to look like. So we have nitrogen gas combining with three hydrogen gases, and the reaction is a reversible, and it produces ammonia gas. Then in chemical energetics language, this reaction is known as a delta H negative. Delta H negative standing for an exothermic reaction, meaning to say heat is produced to the surroundings, or rather heat that is generated from bond formation is more than the heat that is taken in for bond breaking. So since this is an equilibrium reaction, and since this is a reaction that is of economic importance, because the main aim of this reaction is to produce ammonia. So if we are aiming to produce ammonia, it means we need to favor the forward reaction more than the backward reaction. Hence, important conditions have to be employed to ensure that the forward reaction is more than the backward reaction. So since this reaction is a delta H negative exothermic it means there's need for a low temperature. And all the conditions that we're going to apply to get a high ammonia yield are dependent upon what is called the Luchatelius principle. The Luchatelius principle states that if a system that is in equilibrium is disturbed, it will shift in the direction in order to counter that disturbance. So if we employ a low temperature on an exothermic reaction, it means the reaction is going to move forward. If the forward reaction is exothermic and we put a low temperature, it means we are going to get a high yield of ammonia. But getting a high yield of ammonia has its own share of challenges because we have lowered the temperature. So according to reaction kinetics, if you lower the temperature, you lower the rate of reaction because you have lowered the collision theory probability. So how do you compromise between the two? Yes, we have lowered the temperature, we've slowed down the reaction. So we are now employing a catalyst. And the catalyst that is used in ammonia production is called iron. Finely powdered iron, which is a transition element, is used in catalyzing the forward reaction more than the backward reaction. Another important condition is pressure. You need a very high pressure to get a high yield of ammonia. Because if you check, you've got four moles of reactants producing two moles. 
So according to Lucha Tellier's principle, if we increase the pressure, we are going to get a high yield in the forward reaction. And the pressure that is conducive for that to occur is 200 to 300 ATM. Whereby 1 ATM is equivalent to 1.01 times 10 to the power 5 pascals, approximately. So 200 to 300 ATM is a very huge amount of pressure. You can actually be broken down into pieces when you get to a place where you have 300 ATM pressure. Nitrogen is extracted from liquefaction and fractional distillation of air. We are going to have future videos where we are going to elaborate and elucidate further on how the process of Liquefaction and fractional distillation actually transpires. We also have hydrogen produced from the electrolysis of water. We are also going to have future videos that will explain further how the electrolysis of water actually transpires. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, it is my hope and belief that you have understood whatever we were discussing about in this lecture. And I hope and believe that Every cumulonimbus cloud of confusion within your cerebral hemisphere has been eradicated. This is Chico Squared, your host. Ichochipaba, Chakwedi.